right, everyone. It's another miracle. Look, it's time to get excited. It's time that Jesus is coming. We've been talking about it. It's seven years. I'm about done with feeling like I want to talk about it again. And then he just shows up because he gives me the 311 thing the other day. This has been seven years since this happened in 2011. All 311 means is behold, I am coming quickly. Behold, I'm coming soon. Hold fast to what you have that no man take your crown. This church, I've been passing by and I've been, I'm out here in the rain because God told me get out of the car and I don't feel good. I'm sick, but I'm going to, I don't care about the flesh. This is about the spirit. Look at this. Surely I am coming quickly. Jesus. This is on the heels of texting brother Chad. This is on the heels of him saying, Hey brother, you got some encouragement. Yeah, Sister Rhonda, Rhonda had a dream. Behold, I'm coming quickly. I just got that text like two hours ago. And here I am driving past this same sign that I've had in videos that said Jesus arrived right on time. Daniel 9, 24 through 9, 27. And it said something before that. I can't even remember what it said. All I know, and I'll put it on here, is that progressively this sign's been telling me Jesus is coming. It's not just about a church sign. It's about everything he said for seven years. It's about the excitement of Jesus coming back. And a lot of us are losing it. Don't lose your hope. Don't lose your oil. Keep going because Jesus is coming back. My whole mission was to tell people Jesus is coming back. Talking about planning a church in 2018 was me saying, hey, well, Father, if you don't come, I, I got to go into, you know, just ministry and because this is, I love talking about you. But he's like, that's fine, Todd, but I'm coming back. Okay, this is it. Revelation 311. So we're having confirmations. I want everyone that has a confirmation to put it here. I got to get in the car. <clears throat> Everybody that has a confirmation, put it here and tell us that you're having a confirmation that Jesus is coming soon because the naysayers and the scoffers are about to be shown that this is the truth, that people who have been foolish in, in, in the love of Christ and foolish in giving dreams and visions and being and giving words of knowledge and all of these things that we're trying to operate in the Holy Spirit and they want to joke and make fun of us and say we're a bunch of idiot dreamers and a bunch of idiots. Well, guess what? We are not going to be idiots. We are going to be with Jesus and we're humble before the Lord. And I say, Father, in Jesus' name, if this isn't of you, then you'll, you'll lay it on everybody's heart. This is about discerning the spirit. I can't control things like this. I can't put myself in positions to be able to have you confirm things like that have happened the other day with that tsunami video or having other brothers and sisters have the confirmations and dreams and visions of behold, I'm coming quickly or revelation 311, three, the, the video 311 is correct. I mean, I didn't do that. I don't have the ability to do that. God has the ability to do it. And God said enough is enough. And now it's time to pour out my Holy Spirit. And I'm going to be coming soon. And it's going to happen. And those that don't believe are going to be shocked. And those that have been critical and those that are the ones that are saying nasty things to the ones that to my little ones that have believed that it's going to be it's going to be a shock. Because he's going to say, he's going to, he's going to validate everything that's been said. And no, nobody can prophesy perfectly. It's not possible. We can only prophesy in part. We can only get look through a glass dimly or darkly. No one can walk my walk. No one can walk your walk. Watch what you're doing with pointing fingers at people. And every, I have brothers that I love that are out there that since 2011, that used to, they used to be people that were hopeful. And now they, they say, oh, these dreamers, these people, I can't do it anymore. They've been saying that for all this time and blah, 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 blah. Well, guess what? That's not the spirit of Christ. The spirit of Christ is perseverance. You've kept my command to persevere. So that you'll be kept from the hour of testing. Not you've, you've started to beat the fellow servants and be nasty and get ugly and get all down and de depressed. And I mean, I understand being down and depressed. I've been that way. And I understand being frustrated. I've been that way. I'm there with you. But you got to stop it. Because it's time. Now's a time of joy. I don't even have the ability to hardly even function in my flesh. I'm telling you, it's like uh, I'm, I'm getting attacked all over the place with, with my, my health. But the fact is, is that it doesn't matter what's going on in the flesh. This is the spirit. We, a man does not live by bread alone. We don't, the sickness can't hold me in Jesus name by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. I'll be healed because we're about to be completely transformed. It's about to be a transformation. It's about to be a realization of a dream of a fairy tale that people think is a fairy tale, but it's actually the truth. And everything that we've sacrificed and given up in this life with everything in this car that I own, it's the only things that I have and lost children and lost this. And people are like, well, that's because you're a scumbag. No, it's because whoever chooses to follow Christ is not going to prosper in this world in the way that we see prosper, prospering in this world by, by loving the world. That's why Jesus said, if you love this world and you love the things of the world, then the love of the Father is not in you. 
And I'm not saying he can't gift people to be wealthy in this life to help others because we've got brothers and sisters out there right now writing to me in this final hour that are struggling saying, please help. And they're asking this ministry to help. And I don't have the wherewithal to do it. I don't have the ability, but God does. And so if you feel led to help people with your brothers and sisters right now that are asking this ministry for help, then please do it. And I know people are going to say, see, he's asking for money, blah, blah. I don't care what anybody thinks anymore. I used to care. My problem is I care too much about what people think. My, my problem is that I care too much about what people think. And, and there's, there comes a time, just like where Jesus has to do this, where he's going to have to flip a switch and he's not going to have to care. He's going to have to take the ones that, that love him and the ones that have rejected him. He's going to have to let face the consequences of that decision. It's a decision. And so your decision right now is, do you want to help others? Do you want to be critical? Do you want to, do you want to say, ah, oh, that's just a bunch of baloney or whatever? That's your choice. It's not my choice, but I'm doing what I feel led right now. And if you feel like you want to help others, then let's help others. You come up with a way that we can help them. If somebody needs help, post it here and we'll figure out a way to help you. This is a ministry. This is what Jesus called us to do, to be the hands and the feet, you know, of the church. And that's what we're out here doing in a weird way. It's a, it's this YouTube ministry thing, but it's what he called me to do seven years ago and it's not traditional it's 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 outside of the box god's outside of that box of that church right there doesn't mean that he's not inside of it but he's certainly outside of it because man has his rules and regulations they're inside that roof right there but he just used this church right here to put that sign up there because they were led by the holy spirit to put that sign up there and it's for god's purposes because everybody passes that is going to see surely i'm coming quickly signed jesus because he is because it's about to happen and i can't cont i can't contain my excitement because it's seven years and on the seventh day god rested and i have hope that on the seventh day i'm going to rest too march 11 2011 started the journey with a big kickoff and now we've got all of all of this time that's passed and all of these days just like noah said hey it's going to flood and people like it's going to rain it's never rained before you idiot it's not going to happen I'm not Noah. I'm just telling a story of the Bible account of things. See, I'm, I'm even worried. I'm, I'm like d giving a disclaimer of what I say. I shouldn't say that. Jesus is coming, period. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Behold, I'm coming quickly. Signed, Jesus. Revelation 3.11. Re Re Revelation 3.11. Revelation 22.12. The same thing. This is all coming to pass. It's about to happen. Things are about to happen quickly. I want you guys to, to pay attention. I want you to pray for discernment. I want you to pray for revelatory information and dreams so that we can put this together because I think that we're in the final steps now of this race. Do you not know that you're, every runner runs a race? You're called to run a race. Run in such a way to get a prize. The runners in the race don't trip other racers. Let's try to run together and win this race together. Let's finish this race together. Let's put on our shoes and, and let's, let's hold hands and do this thing together and, and make it together. Because that's what Jesus wants because that's his body. His body needs to be on the same page. It's all about his blood. It's about his body. It's, it was bruised for our transgressions. The blood was spilled. If anybody wants to accept the cup of the salvation, it comes from the blood of Christ. He took every sin upon him so that we would not have to bear the burden of the sins from now and forever and from the past, present, and future. And I don't care what anybody says about that. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And he did it. And it's say by. It's the Passover sacrifice of all time. There's no more sacrifices. You don't have to make a sacrifice. I don't have to make a sacrifice. We walk with him. And yes, there's sacrificial love that happens. And he teaches us to be sacrificial. But my point is, is for your salvation, you can't make a sacrifice with anything that's going to get you to heaven. Nor can I, because he already did it. Hallelujah. Jesus is King of kings, Lord of lords. He's coming back. Prepare the way of the Lord. In Jesus' name, God bless. Praise wins every time. That's what song's on now. We're singing. We got to do this together. Let's get it going. Come on. I don't care if people think I'm crazy. Grace wins every time. The mockers mock. The scoffers scoff. The talkers talk. And those in Jesus. Woo! Grace wins every time. Let them talk. Let them talk while you fly with Jesus Christ. War between, between guilt and grace. And they're for, fighting for your heart. But I'm living proof. Grace wins every time in Jesus. Grace wins every time in Jesus. He's undefeated. He is the victor. He is the king of kings. The Lord of lords. Sing it to the Stroud Judah. Ah! And for all of you who think I'm crazy, that's called the joy of the Lord. You should try it on sometime. It's beautiful. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Woo! Oh,